Hello everyone, this is gonna be a quick response to a video made by Kyle Hill regarding Bell's Spaceship Paradox, which I had previously never heard of. As a mathematician, I'm really more concerned with made up things and abstract ideas, not uh, imaginary scenarios regarding real material objects. But anyway, the paradox goes like this. Two identical spaceships are attached by a delicate string hanging between them. The two spaceships are then set to accelerate away equally and simultaneously. The spaceships accelerate indefinitely and so they can get arbitrarily close to the speed of light. The question is, does the string connecting the two ships break? Now Kyle gave his explanation and answer and if you haven't seen his video, I suggest you check it out. Kyle answers that yes, the string will break, and if you're looking for a video where I disagree with this conclusion, sorry, but the string breaks. This video is not so much a response to Kyle himself, but more so aimed at directly addressing all the great objections brought up by hundreds and hundreds of people in his comments. Many of these objections involve making a slight change to the situation and asking why we cannot draw a similar conclusion as before. Thinking about these similar situations and understanding why they differ from the original scenario is actually a great way to understand the solution to the paradox itself. So I think those alternative scenarios are worth addressing directly. You can find the timestamps where I address those specific objections here, but before you do, we should address the concept that I think is the key to understanding this whole thing, the relativity of simultaneity. Whether or not two events occur at the same time is not an absolute concept, but a relative one. That is, two events that occur at the same time in one reference frame can occur at different times in another reference frame. When the ships are set to have equal acceleration simultaneously, we have to understand that this is a relative concept, not an absolute one and it is relative to the inertial reference frame that the matching accelerations were set in. That is, the inertial reference frame that the ships initially inhabit, which we'll call I. Hence, in I, the speeds of the two ships will always match because they were set to have equal acceleration simultaneously in I. Let's keep this in mind as we press forward. The equal and simultaneous acceleration was set in reference frame I. Now, let's address one of the common objections to the string breaking. Objection number one. How is this different from a single rigid ship? Instead of two rigid ships connected by a string, let's look at a single rigid ship roughly of the same shape. For now, we'll give it a single thruster at the end, but still keep track of the two ends of the ship. Now, the ship speeds off from its initial location, inertial reference frame I, as the ship reaches relativistic speeds relative to I, the relativistic effects become apparent in I. The ship will undergo length contraction in I, and you should not think of this as a physical shrinking of the ship, rather a contraction of space itself. There is no physical effect on the ship. The ship is fine. It, it's cool. The ship is always at rest relative to itself after all, and it is totally oblivious to what some other reference frame is perceiving. Regardless, this length contraction of the ship is the reality in I. Now, since the ship's length is contracting in I, the front of the ship is moving slower than the rear of the ship in I. This violates the premise of Bell's Paradox. Bell's Paradox tricks you into believing that the ship string ship moves away from I like a single rigid craft would, by stating that the two ships are to accelerate equally at the same time. This benign sounding requirement is not how a rigid body moves at relativistic speeds, and that's why the conclusion of Bell's paradox, the breaking of the string, has no implications for a rigid ship. So why does the string break? Now that we see why a single rigid ship does not move in the way as the individual ships do in Bell's paradox, we can better understand why the string breaks in the original scenario. All right, we have these two identical spaceships and they are attached by a string. They are said to have equal accelerations at the same time. Remember, this same time business is only relative to the inertial reference frame that they initially inhabit, where the equal acceleration is set, I. 
Since they have the same acceleration at the same time in I, they are always going the same speed in I. Therefore, the distance between the two ships remains constant in I. Now, length contraction as a relativistic phenomenon still exists, and so it will be observed in I. But the ships also remain the same distance apart in I, because they are always moving at the same speed at the same time in I. So as the ships get faster and faster in I, and lift contraction becomes greater, this is what happens in I. The length of these rigid ships will contract, but the distance between them does not. Otherwise, that would mean the ships were traveling at different speeds in I, which violates the premise. The string itself is not immune to length contraction, and yet the ships remain the same distance apart. How? Well, let's look at the reference frames of the ships and the string. In particular, we'll take the center of the string as a frame of reference, we'll call it S. The ships are not contracting in length in their own reference frames, that's not how this works. The ships are totally fine, they're good, they're cool. However, in order for the ships to remain the same distance from each other in I, they must be moving apart in S. In other words, the ships moving apart in S is what allows the ships to travel at the same speed at the same time in I, despite the effects of length contraction. But why would the ships move apart in S? Remember, they were set to go the same speed at the same time at all times in I. But when they start accelerating away, they have left this reference frame. In I, the speeds are the same at all times. Once the ships leave this reference frame, they do not agree that simultaneous events in I are happening simultaneously. In S, they are going different speeds. The ships have not violated the premise. The ships are not doing this by any mistake. They are not wrong. They are following the exact instructions they were given. Their speeds are equal in I, where the perfectly matching simultaneous acceleration was set. It's intuitive for us to think that the equal and simultaneous acceleration somehow follows the ships in some way, but it doesn't. It remains in the reference frame where it was set and given to the ships, which is I, because that's where this event happened. Kyle was criticized for not mentioning that the speeds of the two ships will always match in I as opposed to some other reference frame, but coming to this conclusion is part of solving the paradox. In short, we have traded the observed effects of length contraction by an actual length elongation. The proper length of the ship string ship system has increased. There, there's no way around this, if our premise is to be honored. As the ship speeds grow more and more, the ships will need to become more and more distant from each other in their own frames of reference without bound. And so when all the slack has been used up, the string breaks. All right, now let's talk about the other objection. And this is where it gets interesting. What if we replace the string with a solid metal bar or some other kind of sturdy connection? Essentially, this question is asking, at what point does the connection between the two ships become sturdy enough for us to consider the ship-string ship system a single craft effectively? Well, as covered in the first objection, a single rigid ship doesn't even move in the way outlined by Bell's paradox, but we can still explore what happens if the two ships at least attempt to do this. So let's suppose that we set the two ships connected by a strong material to accelerate simultaneously as we did before. Does this connection break? Well, whether or not this connection breaks does depend on how strong the connection is, and we can actually describe the required strength in a pretty nice way. If the connection between the two ships has a high enough ultimate tensile strength that would allow the first ship to tow the second ship as completely dead weight under the given acceleration, then the connection won't break under this scenario. However, if the connection between the two ships is not strong enough to do that, it will eventually break. This conclusion holds no matter what, but for the sake of ease of visualization and description, we will take the connection to be inelastic. So here's what happens. In I, the two identical ships are set to have equal accelerations simultaneously. In Bell's paradox, this results in the two ships traveling at the same speed at all times and therefore staying a constant distance apart in I. But in this scenario, the length contraction of this inelastic bar between them prevents this from happening. The ships are being pulled together in I despite the two ships attempting to travel the same speed at all times in I. 
Now let's look at S. In Bell's Paradox, the front ship is traveling faster than the rear ship in S. But in this scenario, the inelastic metal bar between them prevents this from happening as well. That is, the front ship is pulling the rear ship to some degree. Remember, in Bell's Paradox, the front ship travels faster due to the simultaneity of S being different than that of I. As the speeds of the ships in I increases towards the speed of light, and simultaneity between the two reference frames disagrees more and more, the difference in the attempted speeds between the two ships increases without bound. Phrased another way, the degree to which the rear ship's speed in I is due to its own propulsion approaches zero. The limit of this situation, if you will, <laughs> is the front ship pulling a totally unpowered rear ship at the given acceleration. In summary, the problem is not really the string. The problem is not any forces that are innately there just because the ship is traveling. The problem is that by setting the two ships to have equal accelerations at the same time in I, we are forcing the ships to try to travel away from each other in S. This benign sounding requirement of the ships is not how a single rigid object travels at relativistic speeds. It's just how a single rigid object appears to travel at everyday speeds. I hope that clears something up to someone out there. And I hope you guys enjoyed this topic, but to be honest, this is all way too uh, real life applicable for me. So I'm gonna be heading back to the land of make-believe now. I'll see you later.